What's up, YouTube? Shadow Slayer Phoenix here, and today I will be be bringing you Yu-Gi-Oh! Hero Clicks Battle of the Millennium Month Five. We are almost there. Um, my venue actually—I just got my stuff in today, and the guy that I've been slowly collecting all this stuff alongside, we went ahead and played a game. So I've actually only been home for ever so long. Um, series three was amazing. We got this pretty dude. He is so good. Um, he is so good. Uh, I only was, I, my box was unfortunately opened by one of the other employees, and he apologized, so I got a couple packs for free, um, which wasn't awful. Uh, I've also started my collecting of the, um, I'm just letting you guys know that this is going on because I didn't even realize it was and I missed the first weekend. But I was able to pick up my round table and this thing is broken as almighty hell. So, we have the... Let's start with the Millennium Key. This thing is a little ridiculous. Like, not the actual ability, but on how this goes in. Um, I like to have it so that the tooth on it, and it only has the one, I don't know how well you're going to see that. Focus, there we go. That little tooth, I like to have on the inside, so where it's lying down just like this. Go ahead and pop it in there. Now, the issue I've had is that it doesn't actually stay in there. It's much like my, like my Millennium Ring isn't glued in there. It's I just had to work with it a little bit. But my Millennium Key, the Millennium Keys, I should say, don't actually make a solid connection like the other pieces so far. So that's a little upsetting, but I'm not worried about it. Um, I have a second Millennium Stone somewhere or another. I don't know where I put it. Oh, here we go. Uh, that I'm gluing the pieces in, so it my piece is in there, uh, but I only ever opened this, and so like the dial hasn't even been turned, nor has this resource dial actually been removed from the plastic. So only this like outer thing has ever been removed and whatnot. Other than that, these are all glued in here, and I can't wait to see on how this looks finaled. I'm getting really excited for this. Um, I did also notice, guys, that my month f uh, four video, I did, but I never uploaded. I will have that up for you guys at, as alongside this. I should have it up before this, but I'm just letting you know it is going to be up. So let's move on. So, or actually, the Millennium Key. Now, I think normally I don't put the, it right in there right away. I think normally I wait till after I read, but... I actually like the Millennium Key alongside the Millennium Eye. Um, this character can use Perplex, but only to target friendly characters. When it does, and actions resolve, that character can use Perplex, but only to target an opposing character, and may only modify the same combat value. That's actually really good. That's really good that's really solid really so you basically get off of one thing in a sense with one character you can perplex in a sense twice or off of one ability perplex twice that's really good so we're up to five now and this is the, the dial is getting even more destructive as it goes and now the piece of resistance dark magician girl this the dark magician oh also, as of this video, we have spoiled uh, the Exodia the Forbidden One. Uh, I can't wait for that. But also, for those of you who have the super rare Dark Magician Girl from Series 2, like I do, like I have all of Series 2 complete, um, we will be getting with the Series 3 OP kit, we will be getting a, um, a new card for her that has the Spell and Trap on the back of the card. Or you can go to WizKid's website for print and play, and they already have it up. Um, I already have my thing printed out for her, so I'm not worried about that, but it's going to be nice to have an extra card. Anyway, Dark Magician Girl is 97 points, uh, standard speed, uh, has the standard attack symbol, defense, damage, 6 range, 2 targets, and her special ability is really interesting. Mystical Ally, at the beginning of the game, if Dark Magician Girl is part of a mystical theme team, choose a combat value other than damage. Dark Magician Girl modifies the chosen combat value by plus one this game. If a character named Dark Magician is on her force, she can choose her damage value. Wow. That's 
pretty good. So for the rest of the game, she has a better stat than anything else. Depending on what your opponent is doing, she can have a lot of things going on. Arcane Staff. Now this ability comes into play later on, and it reads, Dark Magician Girl can use Incapacitate. When she does, she may heal her... You may heal her one unavoidable damage, and if you do, deal one avoidable damage to each hit target. Holy cow! Uh, give me one second, I'll find when that pops up. Okay, so that pops up at number two, on click number two. Using her Mystical Ally ability, what I would do is pump up her damage or her attack value by plus one, regardless. That way, when if you can get her to, if you can push her ever so much to get to that number two, to get her to click number two, guess what? She's going to start giving incapacitate to two characters and then dealing two unavoidable damage, or dealing one unavoidable damage to those targets. That's really good. And then on click four, she gets Magical Mayhem. Dark magi give Dark Magician Girl a free action. And choose a standard power that, can, that an adjacent friendly character with the mystical keyword can use. If you do, Dark Magician Girl can use that power and prob probability control until your next turn. Wow. Okay, so we're going to give... At, now, when she first gets this, she also has her Arcane Staff ability. That's pretty good. Using her Magical Mayhem, I, I don't know. Anybody with the Mystical Keyword, that's going to be big, especially with Exodia coming out. Dark Magician Girl, Ellie, is probably one of the most powerful pieces on a mystical theme team so far. This Dark Magician Girl is what Dark Magician Girl should have been in the first place. And now we have her, and I personally... I haven't used her yet, but uh, the guy I've been doing the months with, alongside, or I should say, did, and uh, when using her on a mystical theme team with Dark Magician, the starter set one, uh, Dark Magician Girl as the spell and trap, and I can't remember the other, I know one of them was Magic from AVX, and I can't remember another one, the other mystical character, but had her on here, and used the other characters that were KO'd afterward to go into Magician of Black Chaos, her borrowing stuff from Magician of Black Chaos was insanity. She is so uber good. I And this is the only month so far that I've actually lost during, so I was kind of impressed. Um, or have lost a game in, even with my XYZ Dragon Cannon. Now, normally we do only two matches because... We try to do best two out of three. Normally, I go two and oh. I, we just go in two games, I win. And it's just like, okay, yeah, we're going to go home. Even with this guy, I won game one, he won game two, and then won game three by sheer dumb luck of critical hits. Was, oh, I couldn't believe it. And now for the map. The Broken Sphinx map has a lot of these... Now, where it is an outdoor map, Flyers excel on this map. You have a lot of these blocking terrain in the gray squares. I mean, you have a huge section of just blah. So anything that flies on that side, on the top side of the map, has this huge distinct advantage. Where anything that flies over here, it's going to take them a little bit to get over there. Now, you do have it spread out here and there, but... You really want to be the guy that starts over there. You really do. You want to be the one that starts at um, on the top of the map. Other other than it's still a great map. It's still a fantastic map to play on. It offers so much difference, and I think it was because of the way this map is set up that I lost. Damn you, map! Arrgh! Um. So other than that, that is month three. Now, I also wanted to show you guys. Now, with only 10 packs, I did pull Z Metal Tank and a Y Dragon Head for my XYZ Dragon Cannon. But my Y Dragon Head is kind of, uh. Huh. Let's start this. Now, I want to figure. If you guys could, if anybody really cares to watch these, I don't know. Mine is missing the top of the head, and its wing is completely backwards and almost flattened out. 
I was wondering if you guys could help me out in finding out how much this could be worth, because it, it's so misprint and so factory frack up. I'm wondering if I can get this replaced. Uh, so thanks a lot, guys, uh, for tuning in, and I will see you next month with the finale with Slifer the Sky Dragon and a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and Exodia! See you later, guys.